Keita Balde up against Palomino. Yankto near side. Keita Balde cleverly played. Yankto! We may be approaching Halloween, but nothing scares Sampdoria. <laughs> The Caltro Guys is a weekly podcast by Adriano Donardo, Gianni Delacoli, and myself, Nicholas Di Giovanni. We want to bring Caltro back to its roots in our communities and share stories from around the world about why we're passionate about the beautiful game. You can listen to us anywhere where you listen to your podcasts, including Spreaker, Google Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and Mixcloud. Give us your opinion on social media at The Caltro Guys on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. The intro song is Fireworks by Jazz. Just like here on the Calcio Guys, the Derby di Campania, Benevento Napoli was uh, a family affair. Uh, here on the couch, guys, for those who don't know, me and Jani, we're, we're, we're cousins. And just like in the yep. Derby, in the, <laughs> in the Battle of Campania, you had the Insigne brothers. So with Jani Del Colli and Adriano DiNardo, I'm Nicholas Di Giovanni. How are you guys doing? Uh, still scratching my head about Monday's game, but I don't know how, uh, I think Johnny, Johnny and I are pulling out our, our hair, are pulling out whatever we have uh, to pull out. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's it's one of those things where, I, I know we're going to get into it further later on, but, uh, you, you know, it was great great action in Serie A as always, and I uh, can't wait to talk about it. If anybody should be pulling their hair, it's me. Uh, and I bet you're wondering why my background is a church, the Madonna della Difesa Church. Shout that's, out. That's, uh, that's what I need as a U of A fan right now. I need to go to church and pray. Oh. Pray that Tides there's no offsides. Turned. Pray that nobody gets Tides hurt. Pray that there's no red turned. Tides <laughs> have turned, Johnny. <laughs> Let's go. How, how, how was how was Milan's game today? I don't know. I'm sorry. How was Milan's that, game that, today on a Wednesday? Defense, you know? I don't know. It's, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it, it's funny how they couldn't get one past the uh, past Neto there. I don't know. I didn't see. I don't know. <laughs> Nick, how are you gonna feel when Milan wins another Scudetto this year? Huh? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Easy. I'll say. I'll say. It's easy. It'll, I'll say. Easy. I'll, I'll say. I just have to restart my PS4. And take off uh, my career <laughs> mode from the last save point where it was good. <laughs> <laughs> all fun, all fun on the couch, guys. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, the uh, it, the Insigne Derby, let's call it that way. But there was another element to it, and it, it ties back to here on the couch, guys, because um, uh, people in Zaghi uh, coaching against um, against uh, Gennaro Gattuso, and and those are two guys they've known each other. Since uh, 2001, I believe they played together with Milan since 2001, from 2001 to 2012. Mm-hmm. And Adriano, that's been like me and you. We've known each other since what the year 2000, 2001. So you got early so you got, days. You got, yeah, you got a pair of brothers and and a, a pair of of brothers, guys who've known <laughs> each other their whole life. So, uh, uh, Spider-Man meme, the Calcio guys, Benevento, <laughs> Napoli. Nice That's cutback. It. it was Roberto Insigne closing in. Still Lapadula. Roberto Insigne has his goal against Napoli. What a story this is. Unbridled joy. They never really believed in him at Napoli, Roberto Insigne. But they will sit up and take notice now. An emotional occasion for him. Taken quickly again by Napoli. Politano, Lorenzo Insigne on his unfavoured left. It's wonderful. What an equaliser that is. His younger brother got the opener, and now Lorenzo Insigne has the equaliser. Jenny, first, what did you make of the game? Because Benevento did go in front, you heard there. Uh, Roberto Insigne, first today I goal against the team that uh, he grew up cheering for, that he grew up in the academy that let him go. Uh, amazing moment, obviously against his brother once again. But, uh, you know, for Napoli, considering they lost last week in the Europa League, it, it, almost as if, it was almost as if, uh-oh, you know, is that hot hot start coming to an end? You know, it, and then it things turn around real quick. Well, I mean, first thing we have to say is that we got to give credit to people in Zaghi, uh, which I will mention more later. Because uh, after watching Benevento for two weeks straight because of uh, the last week's game versus Roma and this week's game versus Napoli, they're not 
an easy squad that everybody thinks they are. They can bring it to the table if they wanted to. And for both first halves in uh, for both games, um, both the managers had to adjust to Benevento's plan, which is something you don't really see often. Usually it's the smaller team prepping for the big team, whereas now it's like, oh, crap, we have to adjust to the quote-unquote smaller team. Um, it was definitely a nail-biter because you're like, okay, this is not a team we should – be losing to after the first half and there would there need to be a change in the, in the di- dynamic and Gattuso did very well putting in Politano and, Penta- and Petania it, like it really changed the flow of the game um I just that's 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 why uh I like the offense that Napoli has because it could change style at any given uh, given point in time they can do whatever they want with it at any point in time they if they want to go with a soul striker they can if they want to have a let's say two big bodies up front with those men and Petania they can uh, if they want to play with the wingers, they have options with Mertens and Signe. You could put Mer- even Mertens in the middle. You can even put Politano on the right wing. Like, it's fantastic. And thankfully, that came through for Napoli. Uh, and, and it paid off because uh, they walked away, with a, walked away with a W that was this close to not being a W at all. Uh, Adrian Menevento, they've had an uh, interesting start to the season. They've played Lazio, Inter, Roma, and Napoli. They've played four, four uh, you know... For the top teams, they are uh, uh, two wins, three losses. They're still in four, in 13th. And out of the promotion teams, they are our first right now. But, you know, kind of looking at um, what Spezia has done, uh, another draw this weekend against Parma, but this time they, they blew a 2-0 two, two lead against Parma. Spezia, I think they're surprising us a bit. Uh, Crotone, I think they're uh, disappointing us a bit. But, you know, out, out of those three teams, um, I know it's just five games in, but is there any of them that, you know, you think has the best shot at uh, staying up? Yeah, well, I mean, listen, I think when we when we spoke about uh, this in our in our preview show, if, uh, if anybody tuned into that, uh, you know, we, we were pretty high on, on Benevento. We, we had seen the moves that they had made. We had mentioned uh, in previous shows, uh, you know, Serie A experienced players, uh, just veterans of the game as well uh, that got brought in with people in Zaki at the helm uh, who they had a stellar Serie B campaign. So I think the obvious shouts were them. And I think uh, the one that Nick was just pointed out, the team that, uh, that Nick pointed out, Spezia, that we were like, yeah, no way, dead last, maybe lucky if they even get a win. You know, it, one of those things where it's like, uh, it was like a one and done thing. But listen, we all, I always said it. I think we've always said it on this show. There's no easy games in Serie A. These, uh, these smaller teams are uh, tricky for, for the big dogs in Serie A, and I, I think it'll continue to be that way. Uh, listen, I think it's. I think I'm going to still stick with Benevento having the probably the best shot, uh, you know, to to stay up in Serie A, uh, just with what I, everything we've mentioned in, in shows prior. And uh, I don't know. I think Spezia and Crotone they can still worry some teams. Uh, how long this the, the this uh, form will last? You know, time will only tell. But uh, I'm going to stick with my guns, and I'm going to go people in Zaghi's uh, Benevento. And he's through again, Andrea Bellotti. Lukic for a third. Oh, my word. Torino are running away with it. Berardi to deliver the cross. It's deep. There's man underneath it. A turnaround of epic proportions. Ciccio Caputo has equalized for Sassuolo. Did you guys see what happened in Sassuolo? But were you able to see? see what <laughs> no, happened I don't think anybody solo? was. <laughs> I was lucky if I even caught a glimpse of what happened, man. I swear <laughs> to God, we posted about it. Another <laughs> one added to the way solo in Italia moment. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, take it away. That, that, that's the one I, I won't say it's solo in Italia because there's fog uh-huh. everywhere, right? But uh, oh my God. Yeah, but only in Italy, they were, they were continuing to play in that type of fucking condition. Maybe. I'm sorry to swear, but. <laughs> what was the meme me like whenever we're not like whenever a big player signs to an Italian team it's like yeah but can he play in a foggy day in Foggia whatever <laughs> hell the, the meme was or... <laughs> it was one of those moments I swear anyways uh, Nick take it away but uh, 3-1 another 3-1 comeback for for Sassuolo they've definitely been the, mo- the more exciting team of of the season uh, I think the Zerbi just said okay we have really good attackers uh, let's focus on attacking Defenders, we have a couple of good ones. We have a couple of good uh, fullbacks in Moldor and uh, and um, uh, was it Kyriopoulos or Likolianis? I'm, I'm getting I'm getting confused with uh, with Kaliri. The the Greek the, the Greek wing backs. It's uh, Kyriopoulos. Uh, it's, uh, ki- yeah, yeah, um, yeah. They got some good wing backs and, and yeah. I think I think the Zerbi's kind of taking a page out of uh, Gasparini's like uh, offensive playbook too. <laughs> 
Yeah, they're I think they're I think they're just banking on 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 on, on that on that note. You know, they, they they they're banking on the fact that they can outscore opponents and they'll worry about defense later. Um, you know, it's 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 a fine line to to kind of you know play with. You're kind of playing with fire bill with that because you know the the famous saying, the famous quote is you know defense wins championships and. Uh, you know, it's 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 a tough to always go in week in week out. You know, every match day to outscore your opponents. I know Atlanta had a habit of doing that. You know, these past couple of seasons now uh, in in Serie A and in Champions League. But uh, and we like to say now that, or maybe Sassuolo was the original Atlanta. Now I don't know however you want to word it. I, I I think I think they are because when when Atlanta was doing well, I was calling them the new Sassuolo because Sassuolo was. Th- the first team to get into Europe, and then Atalanta it, followed them. So exa- exactly, they followed suit. So um, yeah, these, these types of teams that you know they're banking on their offensive guns uh, to take them through. Uh, you know, I still think that it is a bit of a dangerous, like I said, dangerous. Uh, you know, uh, mentality to have. I, I think there's more to it than you know just offense in these games. But listen, if that's it, another saying is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and it seems to be working for these teams. Uh, at the moment, so you know you're gonna have to ride out the wave, you know, while you're still hot. And uh, Sassuolo has been proving us uh, so far in this uh, early part of the season, you know, that they can really compete. So uh, you know, it's we'll see how it goes. But you know, these these deficits that they're coming back from, they have to be applauded because it takes a lot of character for uh, for the for a squad to to do that. And Sassuolo has been doing it. Uh, we love to mention, you know, their their attacking prowess with Chicho Caputo, Berardi. Uh, you know, uh, Locatelli having, uh, you know, a stellar year and into last year as well. So, uh, again, it's dangerous, but uh, they're going to have to ride out this wave, uh, you know, this positive uh, momentum and uh, see how far it takes them. And, and um, okay, well, we'll, we'll, move, we'll move on. Sorry, Johnny, but I'll, I'll ask you okay. this one instead, Johnny. So we okay. are going to have, um, we are going to have Fabrizio from General Club Toronto on. Um, yeah. To talk about Genoa, Derby de la Lanterna, underrated Derby. It's a beautiful Nice choreographs when there's fans there, so it, it sucks. It's the second Too bad time the that, fans can't be there. Yeah. yeah, it's it's the second time they played in July. It's the second time now that uh, fans won't be there. But uh, Sam Doria, Sam Doria, <laughs> they've they've been impressing me so far, and I don't want to jinx it because every year on the culture guys, we always take one team at the start of the season that's hot. We praise them, and then they always choke. First year was Spal, second year was Cali. <laughs> yeah, so. So I'm going to calm down a bit, but but Sam beat Lazio and they beat Atalanta, two Champions League teams, and and Qualiarell is in good form too. I think Johnny, uh, I don't know what you think about yeah, that, but you, I think oh, I thought, there, we, I thought there, he was playing a clip. I was I just there, waiting no, to see sorry, if he plays sorry. a clip when he <laughs> no no no. <laughs> I think um, uh, just quickly, just to, to read on Johnny, I think that their signings, their new signings, get the ball day too. Can uh, can they ever have have added to the spark, uh, Johnny? What what do you think about it? Also, I think, like, Claudio Ranieri, just, like, it's just working out so well for him over there. Like, they had a bad start against Juve in the first game. But I think he's made some ad- some adjustments, and it's been working out very well. Um, it I think it's because the midfielders there know how to play with Quagrella, you know, how to actually, like, use him properly. The man's 39 years old, so he's not the most agile person around. But if you give him the right ball in the right spot, he can do so much with it. Um and I think that's what they're doing. They're like, okay, we had, they they identified what their strengths are and what their I guess their win conditions are in every game, and they play towards that, and 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 it pays off, you know. Uh, given for what he's what, he's a, he's a, he's a decent manager. He's won titles before, so he knows what it takes to win. Um, so I think that's why it's just reflecting upon the players because they're slowly developing a belief in themselves. What is it? Three wins in a row now. Let me double check. Yeah, three wins in a row, you know, and. I think they also won. Was it today? Were the twenty eighth? Was it yesterday? The Copa Italia games. It was today. It was today. It was today, and I think they also they, won they, today. If I when I was yeah, taking they, a peek they, before, they beat uh, Salernitana. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. The, speaking so of midfielders, they're, midfield, get, they're uh, getting some self confidence. Yeah. Speaking of midfielder, the two of their goal scorers were you know Thorsby and and, and Yankto, uh, you know two midfielder guys. So uh, I think they're getting contributions from all over. I, again, Nick said it perfectly. It is a bit too early. We don't want to jinx nothing, but uh, if they can continue on this pace, maybe. They won't be in that, you know, bottom of the uh, mid table, and maybe they can push uh, further up the table. So we'll we'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah, there was Coppa Italia today, uh, third round. Not to, not too many upsets. The Serie no. A teams uh, moving on as as uh, predicted. Uh, Genoa they beat Catanzaro, so we're gonna ask Fabrizio about that. 
Um, Spall beat Crotone, so throw back to, to Spall now in City B. They beat Crotone on penalties. Uh, Verona beat Venezia on penalties, so they just squeaked by there. <laughs> Um, and uh, Monza beat Pordenone on penalties too. So a couple of exciting games, but obviously the big games today and yesterday. Um, Champions League. Last week was good for the Italian teams. Uh, four positive results. This week, three draws and, and a loss. Um, uh, but, um, you know, I, 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 think, I think for the Italian teams, um, you know, maybe the schedule is going to start catching up to them as we talked about last week. But I, I think, you know what I noticed? Especially between Inter and Juve, it's as if it's like like panic mode already. Especially with Juve, um, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of negative talk, right? With Pirlo, a lot of negative yeah. talk. First time they lost today against Barcelona. Morata three offsides today. Three offsides. This guy, you know, <laughs> already he was already he was a meme with the two offsides against Crotone and then uh, Verona. You know, it, it, it's easy to get frustrated. Oh, this VAR, you know, but he's offside. He's offside. Maybe, maybe the you know the offside against Verona where they had to look at video shot from a toaster oven um, to determine if he was offside <laughs> or not was uh, a bit more like frustrating for sure. But you know, he's he's really gotta he's got to be careful. It, it sucks for him because he, nice goals. The goal against Verona was beautiful. But uh, you know today they, I think that deflated them. And right now I think they're playing like no energy. And and maybe it's the fact that the schedule is so condensed. But then again, every league is like that. I don't know what to explain. Inter two, they looked they looked so out of it yesterday against Shakhtar. Shakhtar just just parked that bus. They just put it in park and and sat there the whole game. Uh, Lautaro had a good uh, had a bad miss. Lukaku had some good chances, um, but he couldn't finish and. I, I think that's what the difference is. I didn't. I didn't see any of the highlights. Sorry from La, from Lazio, and I watched the Atalanta game. They came back, so good for them. But uh, a weird, a weird match day for Italian teams. Yeah, I totally agree. I think um, you know it, it's it's to be expected. You know, with with everything that's gone on from even going back to last season into now this season, uh, you know, short turnaround, uh, lots of games in consecutive uh, consecutive days, you know, and, and weeks. So. Um, you know, you, these, these teams still got to, you know, get out the kinks a, a, a bit. I, I don't want to, like, protect the Italian teams because if you played bad, you played bad. You, you couldn't get a result. You couldn't get a result. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the Inter and, and Shakhtar game, again, it's, it's never easy to, to go to Shakhtar and, and play. Uh, going over there, it's, it's very, very tough. But, uh, yeah, uh, Lautaro looked off. Uh, Lukaku... I still think is is one of the, the bigger bright spots of Inter. I, I you know I, I pegged him for a couple in the Serie A, uh, and, he can, and he's he's been scoring. Uh, it's just unfortunate that he couldn't uh, do nothing uh, in that game. The Atalanta game was another weird one because they've had up and down results uh, in the league and now in Champions League. Uh, they went down 2-0 uh, against Ajax, and uh, I want I don't even want to say Atalanta came back. Duvan Zapata came back. <laughs> And, uh, and and gave him gave him the, the 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 crucial point. You know, he scored two big goals. He's been a, he's been on a bit of fire as well. So, um, you know, for Lazio today, the one one uh, and and the Juve two nothing loss. I mean, like Nick said, I think Juve did look deflated. I mean, I didn't catch all the all the Barca uh, Juve Barca game. Sorry, and when I did turn it on, I, I looked and it's like Barca just looked hungrier. I, I don't know what it was. Like if it's if it's not having Ronaldo, if it's still uh, you know working out things, like I don't know what it is, but like it, it's hard to really pinpoint things. Yeah, okay, you're gonna you know there are unfortunate breaks with the offside stuff like that, but you know that does happen in, in cultural. So um, listen, I, I think these teams got a you know they have the, some teams have the depth, some teams don't have as much. Like we saw Lazio get a cr- absolutely crucial point with a depleted squad. They had like nobody there. Yeah. So uh, to say that Inzaghi, you know, pulled that out of uh, out of the hat was, was great. Um, I think you know they just gotta you know keep at it. This is early days in Champions League and in the league, so uh, they're just gonna have to power through it. And uh, you know these teams know how to you know know how to do it. Uh, these teams have been in Champions League or in European competitions before, so uh, I have my faith in, in the Italian teams. I think it just has to come down to preparedness. It's it's like okay, you you know these games are on the calendar. You can kind of take a peek at what they're doing, and you just got to plan ahead. I mean, I know we're talking about Champions League, but like speaking of Europa League, you know, like Napoli's loss to AZ Alkmaar, however their team is, uh, <laughs> Alkali <laughs> Battery. Uh, no, uh, uh, there's any Alkmaar fans listening to Alkmaar fans, whatever, listening to us. Uh, 
Shout out. Uh, AZ Al- Alkmar. <laughs> Anyways, Alcatraz. Whatever. Alcatraz, Jesus. <laughs> oh, and we're going to get flagged for, <laughs> for racism or something. No, but in all no, seriousness, no, like, never. They, like, if you look at the stats of the game, Napoli cleanly dominated. Like, so it was like something like 73% a percent possession to like 27. And it was like 18 chances, like six or seven or eight on target. It was ridiculous. The amount of passes was like 800 and something. Sorry. Yeah, it was like, I'm just spewing out the numbers. There's obviously there's gonna be more accurate numbers available on the internet, but like I don't have it open right now. But what I'm trying to say is that what they had to do is like, okay, we're gonna win. We gotta just wait for the counterattack, get that goal, then park the bus. And we've seen not just in Champions League or Europa League, but pretty much all across all competitions, like a team that analyzes their opponent at a time and figures out what their plan is to win, and they execute on that, they'll find the W if if they do it properly. Um, Inter themselves, I think, if we're going to speak more on the Champions League teams, uh, Lazio is still finding results. Uh, Juventus had to face a very tough opponent today. Uh, I know we like to meme about it, but uh, uh, Barcelona isn't an easy team to play against, you know. And and, uh, and Messi, like, I wish I watched Messi more because watching him today was um, he's he's incredible. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I wish I wish I got to see him more, honestly. I, the, the, it was very fortunate yep. that the soccer world didn't get a chance to see Ronaldo Messi today, but there is a second game coming up, so we'll eventually get that to that. Uh, we'll, we'll get to see that again, um, and it wouldn't be the first or the last time we'll see Ronaldo versus Messi. I, I, I think, especially but, when he comes uh, to Inter. So yeah, <laughs> so like <it's, laughs> he's got his house. His dad bought a house. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, yeah, about property. <laughs> I'll say now. So Messi, he's in come, talks with him. <laughs> Messi, if, if you listen to this, come to the city. Uh, come to the city. I want to watch you every week. Messi, if you're listening to this, go play for your Abruzzese family's uh, team, Pescara. Go <laughs> pick them up from city A to city A. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but in all seriousness, like it's when you play against like tough opponents, obviously it's hard to get the results. But when you play against opponents that you underestimate. That's where you're going to get exposed and punished hard. These teams are in Champions League or Europa Leagues uh, for a reason. You know, yeah, we can we can joke around saying that other leagues aren't the same quality as the Italian league, and it's true. Like, uh, let's call a spade a spade. It's true, but in the end, they're still the top teams of their respective leagues. And um, I think I think we need to. Uh, my my perception is that a lot of the big teams are severely underestimating their competition. And. Uh... So, Roma Milan or Milan Roma was on Monday. I left uh, I left that to now on purpose because uh, we're gonna have our yellow card, red card segment, and I know Adriano has a few things to say about it. So I guess I guess yep. we'll get started uh-huh. with Adriano. So what are we doing? We're doing red card, we're yellow card the first. Cards, we're doing the cards. We'll do the cards. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> for me, right off the bat, I'm hitting it out of the park with uh, <laughs> my red card <laughs> of. Uh, <laughs> Of the week, of the month, of the year, who knows of the of the season <laughs> uh, so far. Um, listen, uh, to, I, don't, I mean, I'm gonna say Giacomo and the officiating crew, the you know the VAR ref, uh, you know, uh, gets my uh, red card this this week. Just, I mean, I don't care what game it is. Terrible. It's just terrible from start, start to finish. Um, he gave the first of uh, you know of many bad calls. You know the 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 first phantom penalty. Then I guess he had to make it up. It was only it's like okay, he's gonna have to give it the other way um, uh, to I, who I, I, now I don't even remember who it was uh, I think that got it was uh, on Mancini. Type. Mancini, yes, yeah. Mancini on uh, Chalanogu, yeah. uh, whereas the first one was Benesser on uh, with Pedro. Um, yeah, that shouldn't have been a call in my opinion. No, like no. I, I, when I was watching, I'm like, that's very it. like he, like you can even ask Nicholas. I messaged the group. Yeah. I'm like, this yeah. that's very very soft. No, it was call. awful. It was awful. Right, but it the was second awful. one. You, it, the second one was so bad that you know it was a makeup call. Yeah, yeah, it, and it's one of these things that, that you know what uh, you know you have to get you know uh, you know all hot headed and scream and yell and what about things like this? But you know both teams, uh, it, it it was just a crazy game. I, I don't know. Like I guess the draw was maybe the the, the result that should I guess came out of there because it didn't seem like anybody you know did anything better to to, to really win there. Uh, you know maybe uh, we had said we had said that Milan was going to win three two in our, in our predictions. Uh, for the FF, uh, f- uh, far from Vesuvius prediction pool, but uh, but yeah, I don't know, just terrible. Uh, yeah, now they get banned uh, for for a month. That ain't gonna do nothing, you know. It, it's 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 not gonna do for me. It's not gonna do well, I, shit. I think it's a good punishment. I, you know, it's I a good think, punishment, but for what? They're gonna come back in a month and what? Do the same call? 
Uh, send them to I mean, send if, them, if, if you send them if, somewhere if, else. If, if, you're, if you're losing your job for a month, I, th- I don't think you're going to come back and do the same mistake. But you know what? Are you nuts? Was, Especially was... Giacomelli. Giacomelli has had a history of doing bad, have making bad calls in, yeah, in, in big games. Uh, he, he's just he's uh, just been you know reckless uh, with this and. At least he didn't have have an influence on the game. You know, it was a bad call either way. At least there was no influence on the game. At least. Uh, yeah, in, like I mean, I mean, there was an inf- like I don't know. It's it's I don't I don't really. I, yes and no. I'm kind of on the fence about influence on the game because he pretty much decided the score. <laughs> like it, it became it came at that point it became that score line because of that. Like I, I don't okay. know. It, it, it was it was tough. But red card for me for for Giacomelli, Could be a red card. ref. Uh, I have another thing I want to add into it, um, just besides the officiating that I got got brought up in, our, in my Milan um, Milan Club Montreal uh, WhatsApp group. Uh, maybe if we should have foreign referees uh, refereeing the Serie. A. I don't know. It's been a topic point, talking point in uh, you know on Twitter, on other po- on other social medias, or just in the past. I don't know how I feel about it, but I think sometimes in cases like this. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's an option. But uh, for me, this week, uh, Giacomelli, the whole Milan Roma situation, red card. Could be a red card. The red card is out. And it's no surprise. Absolutely, it's against the rules. You guys, lighten up. Milan's in first. Lighten up. <laughs> yes, it's still, uh, still. Uh, I mean, like, like to be well, fair, they I've played lost. with their backup goalkeeper, so that's why, like, you have to consider that. Don't even get me started, but Tidi Misute ya tatrasanu there. Holy fuck. And. Uh, and, and, and that, to be that fair, Jekyll goal never should have happened. Yeah. And like I said, just the bad officiating just kind of ruined everything, it ruined the whole experience. And uh, it was supposed to be the game of the week. It was like the laughing stock of, uh, of, of the week on, on, on all platforms. Yeah. It, it, it honestly was. And uh, my, my personal opinion of the matter is that I saw this clip on Twitter a while back of the Australian Soccer League. Where, because I don't know the exact rules of the Italian uh, of Serie A, where like in Australia, if the VAR ref honestly believes that the the ref on the field made a mistake, he can force him to review. I think in Italy, the field on field ref has the right to choose whether to review or not. Yeah, uh, uh, I don't know if he has the right to choose, but he has the final say. He runs the show, yeah. Yeah, but like, okay, I understand that you have the final say, but. Like, you should at least have the VAR ref be like, no, honestly, I think you should actually review this, then make a decision. At least that, you know, like, not but, just have the ref be like, because no. if, if I can, you know what, if somebody wants to correct me, by all means, correct me. From what I, from what I know is that the on-field ref, if he chooses not to go to VAR, he doesn't have to go to VAR. Like, VAR exists, so makeup calls don't have to well, he didn't, he didn't. He didn't go to the screen, I don't believe, in, in both circumstances. No, yeah, but I, VAR, I don't believe. VAR is there. But they're talking. Over, yeah. Well, VAR is there to overturn clear and obvious errors. So if, if the referee makes a decision and, and the VAR s- doesn't see anything to definitely say that's an obvious error, he, uh, you know, the the the, ref, the decision isn't going to be overturned. So uh, no. that, that's why it's there. <laughs> I'm on, but, I'm on but, but in those circumstances, I don't know what he was looking at yet anyway. So <laughs> okay, it's, okay. It's, well, it's one of those things. Uh, uh, okay, Johnny, Johnny's a bit busy right now. I'll, I'll take away with my card. Um I'll go with uh, I'll go with uh, I'll go with uh, the offside rule, but uh, not not seriously though, uh, just because it's taken away five goals from Juventus in the past uh, four games now. Five goals from my my boy my Wait. boy Alvarino Morata. Let's just play open, no offside, no offside. You're about- M- Morata Morata will win uh, Ballon d'Or all kinds. <laughs> you know what I saw? Ever. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off, Nick, but you know what I saw? A shout out to Matteo Bonetti. He said Morata is the capo canonera of offside goals. It, it, <laughs> it made me laugh. It, it was a great tweet. So shout out, Matteo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, man, it, it, it's been so frustrating. Like, like uh, I think the first two of the offside goals today, I didn't even celebrate. The third one I did because it looked good. And then you see his left foot trailing there. Like, come on, man. Stay on side. So, yellow card to all those offsides. And uh, he now sees. Flash of yellow before his eyes. I still love Avorino Mio, though. <laughs> Johnny? As he's okay. munching away. <laughs> yeah. I made, myself, I made myself some nachos with zucchini and stuff. Like with, with there we go. This is another cheese, thing. I, I made chicken cutlets tonight. So this is another thing. Cucina, guys. It's in the works, guys. I'm telling you. <laughs> it works. Anyways, John, take it away. <laughs> so, <laughs> I made a coffee. <laughs> as a kid, when I used to play Woke Up 98, there's, there's a story to this. One of my favorite things to do on my N64 
was was turn on snow for the games because I rarely saw soccer games in the snow. Like I would choose like whatever Italian teams like Roma and it was like I don't know some other team or whatever. And I would set the settings to snow because I liked playing with the orange soccer ball. Right? Because it was so cool to see. You're so used to seeing like a black and white soccer ball or white with other colors on it. You never saw a bright orange soccer ball. Now my yellow card is for this Sassuolo Torino game. Where who in their right mind thinks it's a good idea on a very foggy day to play with a white soccer ball? You know, like imagine, Insane. imagine watching this on TV. Like if you're at the stadium, even at the stadium, I think the fog was so thick it was so hard to even tell. Yo, our boy uh, Connor Quancy was there. He couldn't see shit. He was there <laughs> yeah. for Forza Italian football. He couldn't see. I don't nothing. know if it was so bad on the field though. I don't know if it was so bad on the field. But just but, to say. Just to say, play with a like a bright colored ball so that at least the people watching on TV or at home can follow along with the play. It was impossible. So Absolutely. my yellow card goes to the league on their decision to play with a white soccer ball, or if, maybe if the ref chose to go on with it. That's where my yellow card lies. This is definitely going to be another yellow. Okay, quick, 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 quickly. Let's do our MVPs so we could have uh, our friend from BTO from General Club Toronto on. So you want to go over the snake order again? So I take it away or you want to take it away for Johnny? No, Johnny, Johnny, go. All right. So my MVP, as I mentioned it before, is going to go to people and Zaggy. Um, given what he has at Benevento, like a lot of like these, because if, if I recall correctly, a stat that I saw last week, they're, by average age, they're the oldest team in the league. Uh, they seem to have like, I guess you can call them like a lot of quote unquote rentals. Like, you know, like a lot of guys that... Yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're scraps, but he's making something out of it. He's getting results. You know, uh, he, he's on to something there. And him, himself as a manager, I'm pretty sure if you give him an actual quality team, could surprise a lot of a lot of teams in the league. Um, him himself, I feel he's given a lot of the big teams trouble. Yes, there, I think he lost versus Inter. Was it 5-2 he lost to Inter? Yeah. Uh, and also 5-2 to Roma, but... Uh, specifically the Roma game, they were giving them trouble right in the first half, even with the Napoli game. Um, and Napoli had to adjust. Roma had to adjust to get the results. But that just speaks to the quality of players that Roma and Napoli has. Now, imagine if you're one of the bottom table teams, you know, where you don't have that kind of quality uh, available to you on the bench to kind of adjust to Benevento's plan. All in all, I'm giving uh, people and Zag. I know we usually give it to players. I'm going to give it to a manager this time around because – He's somebody that is finding results. Uh, he's, you know what? Here's a perfect example. He's making when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. That's basically what Benevento is, the lemonade team of uh, City. Yeah. <laughs> People in Zaki yeah. at the lemonade stand. That's yeah. hilarious. The, the, shirt go, the shirt goes with it. The shirt goes with it. But uh, oh, absolutely. I, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna go really like uh, a bit off the map in this one. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go Stefano Okaka because. Uh, he scored two goals, and in the Calcio circles, nobody was talking about that, you know? This is a team, Udinese, that doesn't score a lot. Lasagna is not scoring, and he just said, you know what? Let me score two goals. Unfortunately for his side, they, they still lost 3-2. Uh, Gaetano Castrovilli, uh, I don't know if you, you want to take him, Adriano. I, I, I wanted to go a bit off the map because everyone's talking about, you know, Castrovilli. But, um, you know, if, if Udinese's defense was, was a lot better, we'd be talking, we'd all be talking about Okaka. So, so uh um, and he's definitely not a player we talk a lot about uh, a lot oh. on this podcast. So he he's got my player of the week, Adrian. I remember yeah. ten years ago when Okaka Truca was like one of the more promising young Italian players. Yeah, you know, yeah. and, and we had Roma. high hopes from him, Roma, and then it just didn't work out so well. But you know, teach their own. Anyway, sorry, Adrian, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, I, it's a good it's a good shot. Uh, I remember you know just seeing on social media, you know, you see uh, all the all the praise for all these other you know shouts, uh, you know. Good uh, team of the week, this and that. You know, Kuk uh, was left off these lists, so I'm, I'm glad that we're bringing uh, his name up. But uh, I guess I'll go, like Nick said, I'll go on the other side. Uh, Castro Vili for me, uh, MVP. I had other names uh, that I, I wanted to, to just mention. Uh, Chowito Simeone. Uh, he's been he's been he's been hot. He's been scoring uh, low key. He has four goals on the on the year so far in five games. So he's one guy. Politano is another one. He had two assists in the Napoli game. Uh, one to uh, the, the big man Petania. Uh, getting his first goal in the Napoli shirt, uh, Favili, uh, talk about super, I don't know, sub, and he, and he scored and then bounced from the game, uh, for, so that was pretty for, cool. Former, former Juve player, and I wanted him to see a couple years ago, he had a good preseason. 
No kidding, and and he came to bite them a, a bit in the ass there. But um, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm going I'm going Castro view. Even the Insignia's, I, I found what a, for first off we didn't mention it before, but Lorenzo Insignia's goal off with his left foot is uh, his weak Beautiful. foot. Yeah, a banger. I'm sorry, a banger. Yeah. Uh, great for Lorenzo too, but bangers. But uh, but circling back to my actual MVP, Castro Vili, uh, Gaetano Castro Vili, uh, for me, two goals, one assist. Uh, I think this is his first brace uh, uh, as a player, so it, it was it was huge for him. Uh, and I and I finally think that now without Chiesa, you know, he's obviously the next man up, uh, you know, to really be the next the next guy <laughs> for for this squad. And uh, for me, I just love seeing him perform well because. I hope that can translate to him getting a call up to the national team. Uh, I, I think, I mean, we don't know about Zaniolo, uh, you know, with his injury, you know, when he will come back, what, you know, what that, his state will be when he does come back. So I think uh, Castro Vili can fit into that role. Uh, he just took the game by storm against, uh, against Udinese. Uh, you know, not enough good things to say about Castro Vili. Uh, you know, shout out to uh, uh, Fiorentina's English page on, on Twitter. They finally reached 10K. We love to joke around with them on Twitter, and uh, they used his picture as well. So Castrovili, the man in Florence, and uh, can't uh, can't wait for him to you know make more performances like this. So Castrovili, Castrovili but Udinese got players. Castrovili shot. It's a wonderful finish, and Fiorentina go back into a two-goal lead. Uh, you mentioned um, Insigne goals. I, I saw a video. Someone asked this, this elderly man. Uh, between uh, both Insigne who, who scored the nicer <laughs> goal, and he goes, Bo Insigne. <laughs> yeah, <that's priceless. laughs> I like that one. Uh, yeah, it was priceless. Anyways, we'll we'll uh, take a short break. On the other side of break, we'll have we'll have uh, Fabrizio from Genoa Club Toronto. <laughs> Welcome back to the Couch Show, guys. And uh, joining us from Toronto now is uh, Fabrizio Cardone from Genoa Club Toronto. And uh, Je- uh, Fabrizio, how's it going? Good, good. Thank you for having me here once again. Glad to see you guys uh, instead of hearing you guys from compared to the other uh, episode. It's, a, it's our it's our pleasure, and uh, and I love your I love the background. I love your shirt. Obviously, the Derby coming up this weekend. Uh, yep. But we'll we'll get we'll get right into things. Um, Genoa played Catanzaro today, Coppa Italia, uh, yep. two one two one win. Scamacca with uh, with two goals. Um, so obviously a lower division team. Uh, do you think that kind of gives Genoa confidence heading into the derby? Well, it's tough to say because I, I, I'm sure you guys, everyone, uh, followed the whole situation about the the 17 players that got COVID and so on. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. It was almost coming into this game, almost knowing the, the result. Nevertheless, you never know, ultimately. But it was more about giving the chance to the players to get more minutes on their legs and their feet in order to to get back. Because most of the players, even the ones that were not actually found uh, positive, they were not uh, able to, to train because they had to shut down the training uh, t- field and so on. So they were a lot of players have... Uh, very, very little minutes on their legs. So that was the main goal about this game. And obviously, the, the, the one, two games a week is basically helping them a little bit. So coming into the derby, it's going to be a tough one because uh, Sampdoria is coming out with a good streak with the game against Lazio, the game against uh, Atalanta. Uh, I mean, both of the teams are obviously having some... I don't know what you want to call that, but... <laughs> So is it somebody that is doing well, or is it those two that are not doing that great? I don't know. It's it's it, it brings us into the derby with a little bit of, uh, uh, I don't know, a little bit of uh, worrisome. And for the derby, like, what do you expect? Like, I know you just mentioned it now. Like, okay, is, like there's still a bit of uncertainty because of of both teams' like recent results and whatnot. But at at when when, they, when the ball is finally on the pitch, both teams are ready to go. How do you think it's going to go down? Well, it's going to be a tough one because, uh, as we, as I was mentioning before, Sampdoria is doing quite well. Uh, ultimately, uh, there's a lot of players that have because we also have the situation where we don't have the the the, the fans, right, the tifosi. 
So what that means is you don't have that. I mean, for whoever went to the Ferrari, so, so to the Genoa Stadium, uh, that the, 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 how the, the, the how it's uh, built and how it, it, it uh, basically hugs the whole field, it almost gives that extra strength to the players. So there's a lot of players that actually had have had that experience in the past, but a lot of new ones, as we already know, that Genoa always gets these new players every year. <laughs> but um, but so they don't, they're missing that component. Nevertheless, that uh, the, the the thrill of going into the field for a derby, for any derby for that matter, uh, it's always like that. Uh, you have to win it because that's basically you know both Sampdoria and Genoa are not going to go. And, and, and aim for the top four. So one of the goals of the season is also beating the other one. Oh, absolutely. I think, uh, Fabrizio, like, like you know, it, with uh, the Derby the Lantern or any Derby, it, it's a whole other beast, you know, in, in itself. And uh, like you just had mentioned, uh, we wanted to ask about, you know, having the no fans uh, once again for, for this uh, glorious matchup. Uh, I got chills when you had posted uh, on your on your story about, uh, about the Tifosi singing and, and cheering. It, it just... If, if nobody has ever seen uh, those fans cheer uh, for this derby, uh, you would definitely have to go check it out because it, it, it's something to, to watch. Even if you're neutral, you, you don't like Genoa, you don't know Serie A, you have to go do it. Uh, so, yeah, what, what's, it, what's it like without, you know... Uh, yes, it's one thing not having fans for just a, an ordinary Serie A game, but does it, is it amplified when there's, no, uh, when there's no fans in the stadium for a derby? It amplifies, obviously, in a negative, be, being the fact that you don't have that extra push, like... That that chance, and even all the players that have had that experience, they all say that they miss it. Obviously, they say it also because the fans want to hear it, but at the same time, it does. So nowadays, when you're playing uh, away or playing at home, it almost doesn't make any difference because you don't have that extra push. And and now with the they're they're going backwards or they're going back to the lockdown. At least they ha- were starting to have about a thousand. Uh, fans in there, which didn't make a huge difference, but nevertheless, it was bringing towards the the the, the you know the light type of thing. But it's uh, it's a negative effect in a sense because it's not giving you that extra push. The nervousness I saw that from last July, when Genoa won the last derby at the end of the season, um, you you still see that type of uh, passion and wanting to to to, to win, etc. Cetera, et cetera. But that was a also different type of atmosphere back then. Now, now it's a little bit. You know, it's different. The, the Genoa itself w- went through this total uh, 180 with all the, the COVID situation, etc. I don't know. It's going to be a very tough one. Nice and probably exciting. Hopefully not one of those ugly ones where you're like, oh, this is a zero zero, like very boring. But hopefully like, you know, a nice battle one. And I, and I, and I just saw, so we we're talking about Coppa Italia and uh, we're going to have the Derby in the Coppa Italia next uh in a month from now, November twenty fifth, uh, fourth round, it's gonna be, they're they're gonna play each other. So a nice little um, nice little coincidence. Um, <laughs> considering uh, you know some of the new players on both sides, um, you know are, aren't going to be able to get the derby with fans. Uh, do you think having that extra meeting in the Coppa Italia could kind of help them understand the the history between the two clubs, the rivalry, and and kind of build that quote unquote you know hatred towards one each other? Uh, for sure it will. I think it will in a sense that, you know, this one is obviously part of the championship, so part of the city, so you will have to uh, get that feeling about going onwards and that basically one of the only few uh, type of things that the two teams want to, to can perceive and get. But uh, the Coppa Italia one, so the one in four weeks from now, that it, it's actually a direct match. So that means that whoever wins means that it's kicking out from the Coppa Italia, the other one. So that's like a double winner. Even mm-hmm. though then the winning means that you're going to face Juventus, but we've seen that it's not doing that great this year. So it could be also an, a, a, a great opportunity even to, to proceed a little bit further this year. You never know. And um, if I recall correctly, another team that's from Liguria is Spezia. Now, I correct. Now you can correct me if I'm wrong because I don't know much. Uh, but is there a derby between them and Genoa, or is it not as big as Genoa Sampdoria? Well, okay, the derby would be just called like your regional type of derby. Yeah. Now, you did say something interesting though. There is sort of a derby because the fans uh, of Spezia are. Uh, twinned with uh, Sampdoria, so ah. 
Derby would be a lot more some Spezia against Genoa rather than Spezia and uh, Sampdoria. So you want to win against them even 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 better now even more with uh, yeah. with that being said. Exactly. Okay, got you. Um, so so Fabrizio, uh, you know we've seen uh, you know uh, so far a roller coaster with with, with Genoa. You, you mentioned the COVID cases. Uh, you know, Nick mentioned some of the new players. What have you made about the new signings uh, that Genoa have brought in? Uh, you know, some some guys who've played uh, in Serie A uh, in years past. Uh, you know, we saw Zapacosta, Destro coming out of the coming out of the the, the tomb. I don't know the, the woodworks coming back to Serie A. Uh, just some of these guys that that are now uh, on this squad, uh, integrating into the Genoa squad. What do you make of the players and so far their performances? Well, one of the major issues with the last two years, besides the fact of the placement, or uh, like getting very close to basically to relegation, this year, not, I mean, I'm obviously speaking from a fan's perspective, but trying to be as much objective as possible, I see a lot more technicality, more technical players that are that have come compared to before. Now, the difference is majority of them, or at, at least a very half heavy. A weight of them are all on loan, so that might also, from a fan perspective, and even directly from a player's perspective, that might not give them that attachment to the jersey that a lot of uh, uh, fans are looking for. Nevertheless, it could give them the, the the chance and the opportunity, being that they're on loan, to to show off. Like I'm, I'm, I always think and and and, and compare it like the Borriello of the situation back when Genoa came back to Serie A where it gave him the opportunity to bring back his talent. And that could be for Piazza, that could be for a whole bunch of players, including Zapacos and so on, as you mentioned. And um, the, the, this team has shown um, differently compared to the other years, uh, a, a little bit more uh, quality. Unfortunately, there was that big uh, issue that came with the, with, the, with the COVID, and we're not going to even get into it because we could... Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, talk for hours about it. Like, for example, that 6-0 against <laughs> Napoli, is, I think it's not the reflection of what the team is. No, it's not. It's, it's more about really what was happening behind the scenes, unfortunately, for Genoa, for that matter. Do you yeah. think that maybe come January, Genoa try to go after certain players, or is there certain tar- like certain sections of the team that you think they need to improve upon, or do well, you honestly think that they're going to probably like, stand pat, so to speak? I don't know. Uh, it's a difficult with with Preziosi, Genoa's president. You never know, really. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but um, but um, we're, right now, I don't know if it's just the newspapers, the media that is just pushing through what they're talking about is like this lack of scoring because they're talking about th- three games now, two games except like the Coppa Italia, that there was no scoring happening. Um, but that does not mean, like, you know, again, we're talking about the Napoli situation and the French coming off uh, a lot of uh, players that were still sick. Or, I mean, they, they were just like, just came back with uh, Verona and so on. Uh, so all the newspapers, that's what I was mentioning before, were they're talking about putting through uh, names again for, for from the forward perspective. So attackers and again, the name of Balotelli comes back. And uh, another one that just came up today that I was reading today was talking about Pato. Former Milan. Wow. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> Pato back in Serie A, why not? Be. Imagine. Yeah, you um, still got it. Uh, Genoa, last season, three different coaches. You had uh, Andrea Zoli, Tiago Mata, and Davide, uh, Davide Nicola. This year, start, you start with Rolando Moran. Uh, what are your thoughts on him so far, and, and how far does he la- How long does he last? Well, <laughs> uh, great question, because I don't think it... it it, it it's a lot i don't think it much about what he is capable of because he's shown to be a, a good coach both in Kiev yeah. Vienna, as well as in Cagliari uh, it, it's all about what happens to that mind crazy mind of the president <laughs> that he's a <laughs> guy as well that they they're both like the crazy ones that just like to fire left right and center um i think that he has learned a lot of things. Uh, that does not mean that he's going to change. And when I'm saying he, I'm talking about the president. And I might, I'm thinking, hopefully, that if there isn't any major turmoil or issues down there, that he might even stick with the same uh, coach till the end of the year, and maybe for a couple of years further. That would be like you know, consistency is very important for a team, anyways. 
Uh, I totally agree, uh, uh, Fabi. I, I think uh, that's especially a team like Genoa. Like we we know what they've done in the past. They've been bordering, you know, relegation. So consistency and having, um, you know, concrete, uh, you know, identity. I, I think is 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 definitely key. Uh, another another quick interesting, um, uh, you know, stat is that they don't have to move uh, from the Ferraris too much. They play. Uh, you know, five games in a row at the Ferraris. What effect is, do you think that has on, on the club? Uh, obviously, we've seen uh, in Serie A, you know, with COVID, traveling, there's been some teams that don't want to travel. Uh, you know, we have had, we had, you know, probably the biggest, uh, you know, talking point with the Juve Napoli situation. Um, what do you think, you know, is that, does there, is there any effect in that? Uh, do you think that, you know, is, is good for the, for, for the squad not having to move too much? Well, obviously, from the situation that they just came out as being the first real team that had issues and at that uh, extent, uh, the fact of not moving probably will uh, bring a benefit to the team. Also, because it gives them more the opportunity not to get too tired about the traveling itself and train and still stay at the Marassi. So the five teams, as you mentioned, basically always staying in Marassi will probably give them that opportunity, plus there's the break from the Nazionale, so that'll give them yeah. more opportunity to bring those minutes back in the legs as they uh, need very drastically. Uh, and, and also, like, you know, there are some players similar to that Shomarov or whatever the pronunciation is for, for the, the, the striker from, from Russia, whatever he was. Uh, Ubeksistan, I don't remember. Anyways, uh, <laughs> 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 you know, Italian, English, anything, and he just came right at the tail end of the of the, of the calcio mercato, and a, and they just threw him in. So what I'm trying to say with this is like there's giving them more time plus the nazionale break and so on. It'll give all the team all together to understand uh, what Maran is looking for and uh, you know get in sync more with the other co-players. Um, John, you want to okay. take the next yeah, sure, question? I'll take this. Uh, yeah. So a question that comes from us from uh, from Joseph from Calcio Fan Blogs. Uh, he he asks, uh, when will Genoa make European competition next? Like, when do you think is the next time you could potentially see them at any kind of major international competition? Well, first of all, off, Joseph, off question. <laughs> <laughs> um. That's a tough question. So how am I going to answer that? So I can answer to you by saying, obviously, I hope as soon as possible. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing that I'm really enjoying about this year, perhaps why that the, the, the cycle of Juventus seems to slowly have an issue, finally. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, 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 and the fantastic seeing AC coming back to the top, uh, even though we were still at the beginning and so on. But nevertheless, uh, it, it's still interesting to see rotation and so on. And having said that, even the fresh arms of, uh, of seeing Atalanta up there and so on, it's interesting. And I think it's very um, good also for Serie A to, to, to get a little bit more teams up there, obviously that are worthwhile, not just the team that, uh, arrive there and manage just to get through and just do a few games and then just get out. Um, Genoa, I, I remember since the early days when when they went all the way through the semifinals, all the way to to beating uh, Liverpool, all the way to the the small experience that we had right soon after we just got uh, into Serie A with uh, Gasperini and so on. I mean, it's something that every team, every fan wants to see and. Hopefully, whether it's with this president or the next uh, incoming, whomever that might be, uh, it might be very soon. And uh, talking about um, more locally for you, uh, General Club Toronto, uh, what are some of the things uh, you do as a club? Do you guys have a lot of members? Uh, obviously, now it's different. You can get together and watch games. But uh, talk to us about uh, about your club. Uh, as you just said, basically right now it's basically uh, we were like lining up all the derby from last year, and that had to go down the drain, and uh, and so and so on. I had a lot of co um, uh, contacts that were from uh, Italians that were Genoese specifically that came to mm -hmm. to Canada for small experience, wow. so they were coming here for you know the, the working holiday visa or stuff like that, and they wanted to meet up uh, and watching the game and so on. And unfortunately, that 
kind of had to put be put on hold, and a lot of them had to actually move back to Italy for obvious reasons. Uh, nevertheless, um, we're 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 still a team a group, uh, and we'll uh, still continue to try to 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 spread the word of Genoa, uh, the oldest uh, team in Italy, and, and that doesn't mean that because. You grew up in a family that has a Milan, a Inter, a Juve fan from your parents that you cannot think outside the box too, right? So <laughs> that's what my goal is. <laughs> first of all, I remember when I first moved my to, to myself to Italy as, from from Italy as well was uh, to to promote the the the, the culture, the, the 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 soccer, and uh, that has happened. I'm not saying that was thanks to me, but thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> But um, <laughs> but um, no. Also, Genoa or other teams, for that matter. When you see Atalanta, I'm so proud. Even though Atalanta might not be my be my preferred type of team, but being of uh, Gasperini, as you know how uh, how how dear uh, memories we have with him, um, I'm so happy and so proud of what he what Atalanta itself, from a small city like Bergamo, is doing, as well as showing that it's not only the big ones that can do it. No, absolutely, Fabrizio. You said it well, and and we urge you to to continue your push uh, in, in bringing culture forward in Toronto. We know there's a lot of fans out there, uh, you know, and especially you know bring forward uh, you know the general pride out there as well, and and across across uh, North America. But uh, circling quickly back uh, to to the derby, um, what would you have uh, off the top of your head? Maybe like a favorite uh, derby moment? Uh, if have you ever been to a derby? And another kicker of a question, because we love our kits, our Serie A kits. Uh, you know, we, we fall, we fall, we're, we're guilty for buying these things almost every year. And uh, what do you, what do you make of the, of the kits this year uh, for Genoa as well? Okay, so uh, for the Derby moment, uh, basically, did I have many? Oh God, I have so, so, so. Many. <laughs> we figured. <laughs> So uh, I, I can mention uh, several, but the one that I'll never forget and always brings not only tears, but shivers, everything that you can put on the plate is that amazing derby of, uh, of Milito uh, when it was uh, the, basically a finish three to one. And that last goal where you have Milito and Palladino going all the way to the goalie by themselves, that was just like the dream for, for any general fan. Um, then, uh, about the kids, the kids, I think like at first, a lot of, you know, uh, people like to complain at the beginning because it's just the nature probably of Genoese or maybe because of Italians. I don't know. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, seeing also, uh, in, in the social media and so on, personally, I'm not a super fan of the second kit. I love the third one, uh, because I like the fact of the monochrome on the gold that they've done. It looks a lot similar. Reminds me a lot of Barcelona's kids in the past, and and the first one apparently also won a lot of not a lot of uh, accolades itself, but uh, attention for the fact of being probably. I think it, there was one website that defined it as the best kit, the first kit, but the second best in Italy or something like that. Something I think first one was Inter. Not that ever anybody's happy about that one, but. Uh, <laughs> 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 That's hilarious, but uh, no, I I think uh, I think generally they, they they like to keep it clean. I think on on their kits, I I agree with you that the, the third one is 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 beautiful. I, I saw you post that today as well, and and, and you were a big fan. And uh, taking a second look at it or second glance, it, it's it, it it is beautiful. I find the first one it's nice with the whole you know uh, the the two colors there, or sorry, the white with the um the the, the red and blue down the down the front. But uh, but yeah no I, I mean I guess for you uh, Fabrizio fingers crossed uh, for for the derby uh, are are you like the classic Italian that doesn't like to make predictions or uh, how how uh, you know how are you feeling about the Actually, your prediction for the derby Let me do this first What do you guys think and then I'll tell you <laughs> Oh shit he's playing uh, he's playing uh, us on the spot here yeah. on the couch guys I'll, I'll, I'll be Fabrizio. honest I'm sorry I'm sorry but uh, Sampdoria is hot right now I, I think they'll take it uh, like a one nothing or a two one Okay, Johnny, because uh, I have a bit of a bias towards Claudio Ranieri, so I was going to say <laughs> something like like two one Sampdoria, but uh, now yeah. I feel guilty saying. <laughs> <laughs> say what you feel. I'm going to say I'm I'm going to say I'm going to say 
I'm going to say 3-1 Sampdoria against, um, again, Fabrizio, uh, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, I, hope, I hope they prove us wrong, Genoa. I hope they do. Uh, so we can, we can post all about it and we can, we can glorify you. Uh, but they, I, I know I, I, I'm sticking with maybe what's, you know, what's obvious, I guess, right now. Right. Uh, but in the back of my mind, I wouldn't be surprised if it, is, it doesn't in a, in a draw. They, they, they surprised us in July, right? I, I think we are, they did. A lot of people are expecting Sampdoria to win in, in, in July because uh, at that point, Genoa was fighting relegation. And it turns out that that win was massive to, to stay up in Serie A. So uh, any derby, anybody could surprise us, right? That's, That's why it's a derby. It. Exactly. All right, so it's my turn, I guess. So, <laughs> Absolutely. So, again, you guys said it was three against one. Like, <laughs> yeah. But, um, nevertheless, I think Genoa this year has a lot to show. They still have uh, a little bit of time. They, they need time to, to show what they can uh, uh, give to this championship. Uh, I believe that they'll arrive very pumped to the, to the, to the derby. If it's not going to be, a, 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 I'm going to say, a, a 2-2, it's actually going to be a 2-1 win for Genoa. And I'm going to say that as a fan, of course, but that's, uh, uh, I, I think it's going to be a surprise again. Yeah, that's why I think uh, in the back, in the back, back, back of my mind, 2-2, a draw in the derby. Like we said, we mentioned it before, derby is a different beast. Uh, anything can happen. So uh, I wouldn't be too, too surprised. Uh, I think we're just going uh, with, who's hot and uh, the obvious picks but again Fabrizio uh, we can't thank you enough uh, you know for coming on once again on, on, on the podcast uh, you know we're, we're so grateful for all your support that you give us um, where can all our, uh, our fantastic listeners follow, followers find you uh, and your club on social media uh, you guys can find me easily on Instagram that's the one that I follow the most nevertheless I'm definitely also on Facebook and Twitter um, and basically, those are the three channels that I'm keeping alive. And the handle is? And the story, what? The handle is, for, for anybody yeah. who doesn't know, anybody who's living out under a rock and doesn't know, and doesn't know Genoa yeah. and your club, or what's, uh, what's the handle on, on those social media platforms? Um, you mean the, the, the actual the, name? The itself? username, yeah. The username, yes. Uh, it's a Genoa underscore CA underscore Canada for both Facebook and Instagram, while for... Twitter, I can't remember. I think it's like Genoa CA something. Oh. Like if you do the search, I'm out. out to... If you if you if you if you search uh, Genoa Club Toronto on on Twitter, you'll find it. I mean, find it. always. <laughs> so again, again, Fabrizio, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, guys, like you like every week, where you can find us at the Culture Guys on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as well. Catch our podcast on all your favorite podcasting platforms, and we'll be back next week to talk more culture. Thanks for listening. Thank Talk. you, guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>